Some like it hot, some like it heavy. But with today's breakthrough hit, you get it both ways. From a blazing inferno of an album, this incendiary rocker glistened with just enough pop sheen to win over mainstream audiences. Allegedly, it was inspired by history's ultimate bombshell, Blonde. But whether it was about a pop culture pinup doesn't matter half as much as the fact that this song flat out rocks. It's a classic car stereo blast it out your speakers track that has to be cranked up to 11 whenever it comes on. The story's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you have a top 10 list for every music subject under the moon, like I do, you're gonna dig this channel. Make sure that you subscribe below clicking uh, the red button. Also, you can become an insider on our Patreon below that helps us keep it a daily channel. So I'm excited to return to one of my favorite shows that we do on this channel. It's called Breakthrough. In this show, we break down songs, albums, or events that kicked open the door to an artist or band's career, and you gave them that momentum to rocket to long-term success. Previous episodes, we've covered Come On, Feel The Noise by Quiet Riot, Nobody's Fool by Cinderella, and Silent Lucidity by Queensryche. Today, we're diving deep into a song that kicked open the door for an up-and-coming band that was called Def Leppard. The song, Photograph, from 1983's Pyromania. As Def Leppard gathered at Battles Park Gate Studios in 82 to continue work on their third album, Pyromania, it was obvious guitarist Pete Willis was out of sync with the rest of the band. Yeah, musically, things seemed to be doing all right. Pete had already co-written multiple songs for the record and he laid down some rhythm guitar tracks. But at the same time, Pete Willis was sinking deep into an alcoholic stupor. According to lead singer Joe Elliott, Willis was quite a nice chap, sober but he was one hell of a nasty drunk. And as his drinking increased, so did the disruptions in the studio. When Will started arguing about recording techniques with the band's producer, Mutt Lang, an expert at the peak of his profession, Joe Elliott realized that something had to give. This was Def Leppard's second outing with Mutt Lang, and to the guys, he may as well have been another member of the band. Mutt played every instrument except the drums. He was a songwriter. He was an engineer. And he'd already produced best-selling albums for ACDC and for Foreigner. Everyone knew that they had something massive with this album, Pyromania. And Pete Willis, his behavior, if unchecked, was going to chase Mutt Lang out of the studio and it could cost Def Leppard their big break. Said Joe Elliott, we knew we were making something really special in the studio and... So when our producer, Mutt Lang, started getting concerned about Pete, we knew that something had to give pretty soon. When we realized that Mutt might actually walk off from working with us because of Pete Willis, we knew we had to do something. The last straw came when Mutt sent Pete home for showing up at the studio drunk at 10.30 a.m. That morning, Willis tried to lay down a solo, but he couldn't find one end of the guitar from the other. Mutt was completely shocked. He just sat in his chair crying with laughter at how horrible this solo was. And soon after, Joe broke the news to Pete and Willis officially became an ex-leopard in July of 82. Now that same day, Joe called up Phil Cullen, uh, a guitarist from the British glam metal band Girl. At that time, Girl, this band, they were at a crossroads. They definitely had the potential to, to break out as a successful band. But they just been, you know, they hadn't been able to, to catch that, that break. And Joe asked Phil if he'd like to come down and help out with the new album. Phil, who was already friends with the guys in Def Leppard, didn't think much of it. Sure, he'd be happy to help. Now, leading up to this moment, the guys from Def Leppard, they caught one of Girl's shows, uh, I think it was just a few weeks before that. It was a local club that was called The Zigzag. That night, Phil Cullen put on a guitar clinic, semi-drunk and hamming it up for the audience. He played the wildest solos that he could. At times, you know, he used his teeth or played the guitar behind his head. He pulled out every Jimi Hendrix trick that he knew. It was an awesome spectacle to see. Little did he know that this was his Def Leppard audition. 
Said Joe Elliott, Phil played about as brilliantly as I had ever seen someone play up close like that. And when I met him backstage afterwards, I realized he was completely pissed out of his mind. It struck me, if a guy can play that well, being as blissed as he was, then that really said something. <music> Colin would later recognize the irony of that night. Him putting on an alcoholic-induced extravaganza and then replacing Pete Willis for alcohol abuse issues. The difference was that unlike Pete, Phil didn't let the bottle interfere with his work. In fact, Mutt Lang would praise Colin for his work ethic. Phil met up with the band that day, um, or the day after the call. They told him about Pete. They also played him what they had for Pyromania so far. Phil could not believe what he was hearing. He was absolutely blown away. Hell yeah, he wanted to help with this record. So Mike gave Colin a cassette with an unfinished song, Stage Fright. Uh, Phil's assignment was to go home and write a solo for it. And then they'd assess if he was gonna be a good fit for this band. The next day, Phil showed up at Battery Studios and he turned in his homework to Mutt Lang. Uh, plugging in his 50 watt Marshall head, he let the solo just rip. The rest of the band had been watching World Cup soccer on TV when Mutt came rushing out excitedly and he pulled everyone in to listen to this amazing solo by Phil Collin. Said Joe, it was amazing. It was just the kind of sound and, and the attitude that our band needed to get to that next level. Once Phil had Mutt's blessing, everyone knew Phil was the guy. After nailing the Stage Fright solo, Colin wrote more solos for the album. Rock of Ages, Foolin', Rock, Rock Till You Drop, and Photograph, of course. He also laid down additional guitar parts on the other tracks on the album. He called it a lead guitarist dream. But for the rest of the band, it was clear that Colin had just saved the album. In true Mutt Lang fashion though, Pyromania took nine months to record. And as much as the guys loved and respected Mutt Lang, that didn't mean it was easy. In fact, members of Def Leppard said they didn't have much fun making Pyromania. Not because they weren't excited ab about the music, they were, but because Mutt was always pushing them to their limits, which of course was a good thing. Drummer Rick Allen, he said there were times he did not dare go into the control room, especially when Joe was working. The sound that Mutt was trying to get out of Joe, it seemed almost impossible. It was like being in the army, is what Joe said. Drop and give me 20. <laughs> Mutt was always telling him that he could do it better. And Joe would always say to himself, I don't think I can. Comically, Joe said that Mutt was so fantastically tuned in sonically. It was like he had bad ears. But it's that attention to detail that, that made Pyromania stand out amongst all of the rock albums. Adam Reeder, the Professor of Rock here. Don't miss the next Professor of Rock Live show on Saturday, July 16th at the Eccles Center in Park City. An exclusive evening of story and song with Lou Graham, the voice of Foreigner. Lou Graham at Professor of Rock Live sharing never before told stories and performing Foreigner's biggest hits. Get your tickets for Professor of Rock Live at parkcityinstitute.org. Professor of Rock Live with Lou Graham, the voice of Foreigner, July 16th at the Eccles Center in Park City, presented by the Park City Institute. The effort definitely paid off when Pyromania was released on January 20th, 1983. It hit the shelves in a blazing inferno. The album's rich pop sheen and dynamic sound it set it apart from the rest of the the day's heavy metal offerings or hard rock offerings. Phil Collins said it was Star Wars for the years. I love that. <laughs> Bassist Rick Savage described it this way. Quite simply, Pyromania was the album that we always wanted to record. Write, create from the early days. We just wanted something that had crunch guitars, masses of vocals, a huge drum sound, but with a lot of melody and musicality to it. We really thought that Pyromania was actually the album that delivered all of those things. 
Pyromania charted at number two on the Billboard 200. It went to number four on the Canadian RPM album chart, and it went to number 18 on the UK albums chart. You know, thinking about it, it would have been an easy number one album if not for the historic freight train called Michael Jackson Thriller. Pyromania went gold in just five weeks. It went platinum in five more. For much of the year, it sold 100,000 copies a week. By September of 83, Pyromania had sold over 4 million copies. One interesting statistic is that at the time, cassette sales beat out record sales three to two. It meant that fans were buying Pyromania so that they could rock out in their car. Today, Pyromania has certified diamond by the RIAA selling over 10 million copies. Two 10 million plus copies for Def Leppard. The whole album is masterful with undeniably strong tracks from top to bottom, singles including Rock of Ages, Foolin', Too Late for Love, and today's featured song, Photograph. Photograph was an inescapable, infectious rock anthem in its day. It had all the makings of a crossover hit. You know, slick production, hooks out the ears, and harmonies everywhere. Hot and heavy lyrics and an irresistible chorus. I mean, what's not to love about this rocker? As we dive more into Photograph, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, for the frames I wear every single day. Do you ever get headaches or fatigue from staring at screens all day long? Make sure that you design a pair of Zennies with blue blocks. They protect your eyes from harmful blue light. It's gonna change your life, it has mine. Go to zenny.com today to order yours. Yeah! Photograph rocked hard enough to capture the metalheads, but it was melodic enough to draw an 80s era pop fans as well. Whereas most other hard rock acts fan bases consisted mostly of guys, Def Leppard got the guys and their girlfriends too. Part of that had to do with Leppard's gang style vocals, which Colin described as a very important part of our thing. We used it as an instrument. It wasn't just like backing vocals and you sing if you want to, or maybe if you don't want to. It was very precise and we thought of it as an instrument. Like I said, hooks and harmonies everywhere. According to Joe Elliott, Photograph was a leftover from their high and dry sessions. Can you believe that? A leftover. It was a song they never quite finished at the time. For the Pyromania sessions, much suggested they give it another look. Rick Allen later said that Photograph went through many, many, many changes until they settled on what we ultimately hear today. Such a woman, you got through the years, there has been some debates about whether Photograph was actually about a specific girl. And back before the internet, unless you happen to catch a band member interview, there was really no way to know for sure what the truth was. Like Thanks to the song's music video, the speculation all centered on Marilyn Monroe. But nowhere in the lyrics is Monroe or anyone else name checked. I mean, the closest description we get is, I see your face every time I dream on every page, every magazine, so wild and free, so far from me, you're all I want, my fantasy. But since Def Leppard showcased Marilyn Monroe in the video, a lot of people just assume the song was about her. And Joe Elliott seemed to support this view uh, in an interview on Def Leppard's website. He said that in his London apartment at the time, there was a hole in his bathroom wall that was left there by the previous tenant. So in true Shawshank Redemption style, he covered that hole with a poster of a pinup girl. That girl, you guessed it, Marilyn Monroe. And no, there wasn't an escape tunnel behind it. <laughs> but since he saw Ms. Monroe's picture on a daily basis, it served as the, the perfect inspiration when it came time to write the lyrics for Photograph. Okay, so case closed, right? The song's about Marilyn Monroe, but maybe it's not. In a separate interview for VH1, Elliot had this to say. 
One day, Mutt had the line, all I got is a photograph. I said, it's a photograph of something you can't ever get your hands on, somebody that's not here anymore. Over the years, it's become exaggerated to biblical proportions that photograph was written about Marilyn Monroe because she was in the video. I don't want to break anybody's heart here, but Marilyn Monroe was just another average actress to me. The song was about somebody that's out of the picture. All I've got is a photograph, but it's not enough. So then it's not about Marilyn Monroe. You've got two different uh, opinions from the same person. I was puzzled for a hot minute by these two statements from the same person when I found them. Uh, they tell two different stories, but then I kept digging, and then I found a third interview with Joe Elliott that set the record completely straight. It said, Joe, when it came time for the lyrics, Mutt said, what do you got? And I told him, I don't have any words, but I have an idea that's been percolating in my head. He then talks about the Marilyn Monroe poster on his bathroom wall and then said to Mutt, wouldn't it be great to write a song about a woman who's the ultimate woman, but also a woman you could never have? He said, what do you mean never? And I said, because she's dead. And then he said, for the video, we stuck with the Marilyn Monroe theme all the way through. But the fact is, the song wasn't actually about her. It just happened to be her on the poster. It could have just as easily been Jane Mansfield. So there you have it. He said, you know, it could have been any iconic, tragic female. And that was the premise. The song is about a goddess-like image of someone you can never have because they're not alive anymore. They only live in your memory, in the photograph. I'm out of luck, out of love, got a photograph, picture, a passion killer, you're too much, you're the only one I want to touch. It's a doubly tragic tell. A beautiful girl who is gone too soon and a guy who can never be with her. Marilyn Monroe serves as a sort of stand-in, I guess, a symbol for the idea that Joe Elliott wanted to convey in this song. But regardless of how literal or figurative you want to make Ms. Monroe's place in the song, it's still an amazing song and it's not dependent upon her. I have no doubt that guys everywhere listening to the song they had a girl of their own in mind, Marilyn Monroe or otherwise. They just rocked out to it. Sometimes the meaning just isn't there. You gotta hand it to Mutt Lang, the guy's a production genius, musically and lyrically. He knew exactly how to hook listeners. And Joe Elliott and company will become masters in their own right. <music> Photograph was the song for Def Leppard. It broke everything open for this band. Yeah, they had some success before that. I mean, the guy's sight bringing on the heartbreak as a primer. But it was Photograph that knocked it out of the park. This was the song that began and defined the pop-driven hard rock craze that really dominated the 80s. Of course, just like so many other early 80s acts, MTV played a big role in Def Leppard's success. I mean, when Photograph was released, it became the network's most requested video. After being put into hot rotation, everything, and I mean everything, exploded for this band. Said Joe Elliott, it went through the roof because of MTV. Once people started getting cable all over the states, this fledgling MTV thing, it just took off. We got fantastic bounce back from people watching it on MTV and then asking the radio stations to play it. The two started bouncing back from each other, you know, request wise and the song, it just went crazy. <music> Colon on photograph, all of a sudden it exploded. And while we were on tour, we were opening up for Billy Squire. It would just get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that some of the towns you'd go in, if they had MTV, you'd walk in and you'd get mobbed in a hotel or in a restaurant. I mean, really, you think about it, by the time Def Leppard came off that tour, probably even in the middle of the tour, they were bigger than Billy Squire. Hell, they were as big as any rock band on the planet at that time. And, uh, and they would somehow top it in the years to come with Hysteria. It's just crazy. Hysteria, when you're near. Photograph went to number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100, which is a big deal for a hard rock song. 
went to number one on the U.S. mainstream rock charts. It went to number 66 in the U.K. Uh, I think it went to number 32 in Canada. Photograph has appeared in a number of movies and TV shows. There's Robin Big, Balls of Fury, Grand Theft Auto V, Wicked City, Family Guy, American Dad, both had it. Photograph has also been covered by Santana and Daughtry. I remember hearing Photograph through my friend's older brother. You know, me and my friends, we were all listening to Michael Jackson Thriller at that moment. But this kid, he had you know, the wannabe metal mullet, and he played his boombox so loud that his parents would always yell at him to turn it down. And I managed to talk him into recording a copy for me. I think I, I gave him a Fernando Valenzuela uh, a rookie card. Uh, it didn't leave my, my Walkman for two months. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I remember a few years later when Hysteria hit and my little brother was listening in on me and my friend's conversation. We were talking about the, the band members in Def Leppard and I mentioned guitarist Phil Collins. My brother was like, Phil Collins is in Def Leppard? Man, that guy must never sleep it's with a solo career and Genesis and Def Leppard. <laughs> we laughed about that one for a while. Again, Def Leppard, they were so big. Uh, and it all started with this song. This is the song that kicked open the door to 80s hard rock. <laughs> Leave us a comment about Def Leppard and this hard rock 80s power pop masterpiece. Who is this song about? Is it about Marilyn Monroe? What, what do you think? Uh, someone else come to mind when you hear it. Well, let's share some memories. Do you remember the first time you heard it or you heard Def Leppard? If you like this episode, make sure to check out our other shows on Def Leppard. We've done an extensive two-parter on Hysteria. In fact, we have an interview with Joe Elliott himself. Uh, so check that out. Make sure to subscribe below if you want to get deep dives and the best ofs and the countdowns on a daily basis. All this helps support our mission of keeping the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth.